Welcome to What's Going On, the weekly podcast and videocast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. <clears throat> Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of What's Going On. I'm Pastor Katie here at First United Methodist in Yankton, South Dakota, and I'm glad you could join me for this episode. Uh, you guys liked having me having a guest so much that I, I went out and found another guest for you. Uh, this week we have Cindy Erlinson. Erlin, did I say Erlinson, that right? Erlinson, yep, that's yes. good. Uh, I didn't even check with you beforehand. No, you've got I just, it. You've got it. Uh, she's with Habitat for Humanity here in uh, Yankton, and you cover Yankton and Clay Counties. Mm-hmm. And she's here because, uh, one, again, uh, you guys like it when I talk to people, and two, uh, we haven't heard from you in a little bit, so we figured we'd get some updates on what Habitat's doing, and we got a special little project um, that'll be coming up in a couple weeks that we want to talk about. So, Cindy, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So, <clears throat> I think it's been probably, what, six months or so? Has it? Since I just can't even. I mean, the time flies by so fast. It does. So, yep. Um, and so, what's been going on? What are some of kind of the big things that have been going on over at Habitat lately? Well, um, the projects that we're doing, lots and lots of projects, which is wonderful. There's um, a lot of need for those smaller projects, things to help like mobility um, ramps, um, railings, um, doing some fixing on uh, some older people's, um, just like on their decks or things just to help keep them safe. Um, We've done some skirting help to keep the wind from coming underneath there, Um, some Uh, brush removal. Um, During one of those times when we went to see an elderly person, we found that her propane tank was leaking um, pretty badly. So we were able to call those folks and get them over there to get that right away. Apparently it was leaking in two places. So check on your neighbors, Yeah. (laughs) Um, especially the ones that are kind of living out on their own a little bit. So um, just some wonderful experiences helping uh, those folks. And and we do you know, a lot of them have been in Clay County, actually. So if, if you know, um, Yankton County folks, if you know of somebody, it has to be a homeowner for us to do improvements on it. We can't do um, improvements on, on rental properties. But if you have somebody that, you know, is a, a lower income in need of, of those types of um, small repairs, um, things to help keep, keep people safe or make mobility um, easier, easier, weatherization issues, um, mm-hmm. anything like that, um, just, you know, give us a call and uh, we can, you know, we have an application, of course, but we can, you know, at least talk about the program with you. So we, we, we encourage people to refer and, and just give us a call and ask us some questions about that wonderful program um, because that's that's in my heart of, of things that we can do and we can make uh, an impact on more families' lives. Um, well, yeah, really. mm-hmm. I think that's an incredible thing um, to that kind of shift that's been happening. Of It's not just big builds and, mm-hmm. and, and one house and, mm-hmm. and this incredible blessing for one family, but mm-hmm. to be able to make a difference in many people's lives. It reminds me of someone in our church makes uh, pillowcases. We have all this fabric from quilters and um In the past, our quilters have made these incredible, wonderful, intricate quilts. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the woman who I was talking to who made pillowcases, she says, those quilts are gorgeous, but they're a blessing for one person or one family. And when I make pillowcases, Mm -hmm. I can bless so many more people with that same amount of fabric. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's kind of how it feels to me is that Mm -hmm. that there's, you know, there's smaller projects, but a bigger impact overall in the communities. Right, right. and really to that, that person, if they're owning their own home and really what's keeping them um, from staying in their home is something small, you know, like maybe they need a wider doorway or maybe they need, you know, some extra um, grab bars in their bathroom or whatever Mm -hmm. to keep them safe rather than, you know, moving. If they love their home, if they're safe in other ways, we can try to help with that. Or even a homeowner that is, you know, just a lower income homeowner that's having trouble with some aspect of their home that's making it hard for them to stay there. Um, or maybe they have a code violation that they need to have something mm-hmm. fixed or mm-hmm. whatever, but they just don't have the funds to do that. We want to help preserve the current homeowner's affordability as yeah. well. So, um, you know, if, if you lose your home or if you're not able to keep maintaining your home because you can't afford just, you know, some fix, um, we would like to help you stay in your home if, it, if it's 
possibility. Yeah. And not have you sell your home to an investor or somebody that's right. going to flip it or make it less affordable to the next person. Um, so just a lot of things that we're, we want to do here. And I think Yankton's a great place to, to try to help keep the affordable housing stock that we have and update it a little bit. There's a lot of, of stock that could use some updating yeah. here. So. Well, and there's also just the, even if maybe you can scrounge the funding for it, finding someone to do those small projects mm-hmm. is very challenging. That's true. That's true. Um, that's yeah. another piece of that puzzle. That's, right. there's so many pieces. Last So last week we had um, Cassie Nagel from River City Domestic Violence. And mm-hmm. one of the things we talked about were was how all of the different nonprofits are working toward very similar goals, but they're coming at it from different ways. And one of the things they talked about was housing Mm -hmm. and how the lack of affordable housing, the lack of Mm -hmm. places that are safe cause hardships for the work that they're doing and trying to rehome people, the work that Pathways is doing, trying to get people out of homeless Mm -hmm. and into homes, because they're not going to be able to get into a a new build or or some of these nicer places. So how do we you know, um, maintain and utilize and update um, the mm-hmm. the housing that's available in Yankton that's, you know, not. Already here, right. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like to get even more into the rehab part of it. That's a lot of work, and you don't know what you're getting when you're purchasing mm-hmm. a home like that. But, yes, what, what we are calling affordable housing now in the regular market is – you know, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you know, or more, right. is what is called affordable. And I, my first home was, I don't know, like thirty-five thousand. I think. Well, like no, that. I my parents bought the house they currently live in in mm-hmm. nineteen ninety for thirty thousand dollars. Right, exactly. So it's kind of like, um, you know, even the folks that are you know graduated from college and like my kids graduated from college, um, you know, you have student loans, um, and then you have great jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, but your first home now isn't going to be in the usually the hundred thousands because your first time home buyer's loan um, has so many stipulations on it about how your house can be. I mean, it, it can't be a fixer upper. You have to have these things in place. And so to get that, now you're in the two hundreds. And then do you want to put that much money towards right. that, or do you even have it to do? Right. So first-time home buyers, veterans loans, all of those types of loans are, you know, have that attached to it. So it makes it really hard for those folks to be able to get a house. Now, Habitat for our home ownership program, <clears throat> you don't have to. I mean, even though our homes are worth two hundred and fifty thousand then we subsidize um, the part that doesn't work with their current income um, as a, we call it a soft second loan. So it's it's off to the side, sitting there, um, not having to pay on it until either you sell your home or you pay off the mortgage or whatever, then it's, it's gone. But um, that's how we kind of manage it. And mm. then plus we have the 0% financing, so your payment's lower. You're not going to have that huge interest. Uh, interest payment as part of your principal. So that's how we work with our income there. Um, but you're right. I mean, more and more, there's just so many folks that are in that bucket now compared to what it used to be. Right, right. It's it's just, mm-hmm. it's fascinating how these, uh, all these same sort of challenges crop up when you look at it from mm-hmm. the different organizations and what they're doing and, the, and what they're facing. That right, and that's the point too that I should make as well that all these people that you've mentioned that we do work yeah. together, you know, and um, it's a beautiful part of the whole thing is we are doing it from different aspects, but we understand the challenges and we can refer each other like mm-hmm. um, long-term services and supports and independent living choices are good ref- referral uh, partners for yeah. us. Um, USDA is great for us for helping with funding and uh, things like that. And then Pathways, of course, is a partner that we share their truck for pickups. And then we share the stuff that goes right. to there or to our restore. Um, it's, it's a great community to have this type of um, service in because there are the partners are wonderful right yeah I think that I love I love Yankton for that it's Mm -hmm. it's still a small enough town that when we all know each other Mm -hmm. we all um I think everyone who's working kind of in the nonprofit sector they all we all share kind of heart Mm -hmm. for people and 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 they are people with names and faces and stories and Mm -hmm. and and worth uh investing in 
Yeah. And so I think that's really cool. And the other one of the other parts of, of Habitat here in Yankton is the ReStore. And so how are oh. things going over on that side of things? Um, we're doing well. We um, are always moving stuff around and trying to get more floor space because our um, store is not huge in um, comparison to Sioux Falls, obviously, or um, some of the other places. But um, <clears throat> so we've... Uh, if you haven't been there for a really long time, we've taken out one of our, our boardroom sort of area and made that into floor space. And now kind of working on moving my office and the project manager's office to the storage room. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have like a little space and then uh, then we're gonna have more uh, floor space. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, we're trying to make the most of what we've got and make, make use of every square inch of it, um, you know, because obviously we're getting Donations in. We'd love to get more donations in if anybody uh, has some good furniture or appliances. Um, you know, just keep giving us a call. Keep um, your furniture here for our. Oh our, yeah, right. Anything, Sorry. but I will say After that yet. any furniture that doesn't get sold at our rummage sale, I do believe right. is heading to the restore. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, if it doesn't work out to sell it through our rummage sale, know that that's where it's going to. Sorry hit. about that. Yes, I didn't no. want to step on that. So, <laughs> no, I'm just I'm. We're still we're still uh, in the beginning stages of like, hey, as you're spring cleaning, right? Keep this in mind. But but that's not always true that we're having a rummage sale, and if at other points in the year you have your downsizing I mean that's I hope that you think about is is any of the stuff I'm looking to get rid of something that that could go to the restore right yep and we are actually in our um, outside conics we are storing up stuff for the for the garage sale to bring when uh, when the time comes yeah restore is actually going to partner with us and bring some things for the for our rummage sale as well so that's really exciting um, I love any time that we get to do things together and partner together. Um, habitats uh, near and dear to my own heart, and uh, you know, I just drove past the other day the house that that our church got to help build mm-hmm. a few years ago, and and uh, it's just cool to see like that really happened. That house is yep. really standing. And, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I only have that question because I helped with it. So, <laughs> That's like, <right. laughs> yep. Yeah. But I, but I was like, you know, let me sweep. I'm really good at that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, and so uh, let's maybe talk a little bit about this thing we have coming up. Sure. So it's going to be on March 3rd. Uh, we're going to be bringing something to the church uh, on that Sunday uh, for you to be able to see. And what is that thing? Well, this is a beautiful, I guess it's red oak. I should have written down notes. Um, <laughs> or cedar. I don't know. Um, maybe cedar. It's uh, definitely wood. It's definitely beautiful, <laughs> beautiful wood um, uh, bench, and it's um, handcrafted by um, Dr. Dave Holsworth, and um, he does this every year as far as I know. I know he did it last year, too, because I, I just started a little bit less than a year ago, um, which time flies crazy. Right. Um, but um, I know that, that they had just done the whole raffle thing to raise money so this is the thing about it that's um it's just a beautiful thing that he does i don't know how long it takes him but i mean this thing is gorgeous and i imagine it takes him many 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 hours to do that and we just appreciate his love of the habitat mission um and mary holsworth um also is you know uh part of our is still on our committee she was part of our board when as she filled out her terms of that but she's still on our committee so um, we just love first of all that that someone's willing to do that for us and and so we put on a raffle for that um, each year and uh, we have it in the restore um, right now and we'll be drawing uh, for a winner in um, uh, on Mother's Day this year and so what we were hoping to do is um, allow you all to see it in person and, and bring it over here mm-hmm. um, and so that you might be, um, if you're interested in you know, purchasing one of the, the raffle tickets and, you know, also supporting the Habitat mission um, through that. Um, you might have a chance to win this this gorgeous thing. So a Dave Holsworth original. There you go. That's a good way of saying it. Yes. yes. And um, so it's just five dollars for a ticket where you can get five for twenty dollars well that's quite a deal it is quite a deal. 
So if you if you're in church on March 3rd, uh, we will have it here on site for you to be able to see. And again, it's five dollars a raffle ticket, and that you'll be able to get through anybody uh, connected with Habitat mm-hmm. or going down to the restore. And I believe the hope is that it's going to sort of travel around. So you're going to want to make sure you get your tickets. <laughs> Oops. Well, yeah, it's just for us. Um, get your tickets so that you uh, have a chance. Uh, I. I have something very unique in my yard. Well, it's not there for the winter, but Dave Holsworth and uh, a friend of his made a bell oh. out of recycled materials. I that. And it's like a can, it's metal. Mm-hmm. And it's like a canister. And then it has a, cro- a metal cross and flame for the Methodist church oh, on the neat. top of it. And a little thing where you hit it and then uh, it rings the bell. And wow. it's an incredible piece of yard art that mm-hmm. we have. So I have a Dave Holsworth original, yes. but I don't have a bench. Right. So, you know, I feel like now maybe I'll become a collector. At you this should, point. you know, if you, and just to, <laughs> to feed off that just a little bit, he has also made us two beautiful kind of hamper side tables that are just like amazing. Um, and those are for sale right now at the ReStore. So you can buy those right now if you'd like to. Um, and that also, again, supports the Habitat mission as well as um, just uh, getting something gorgeous that uh, is handcrafted. Well, and I also want to make a plug for the ReStore in that uh, I tend to think of it primarily for furniture. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if I don't have a need for a piece of furniture right now, I'm not thinking like, oh, I should just go check out the ReStore. But this this fall slash winter, I was there for the, we were prepping for the Parade of Lights. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were getting some things, again, that partnership between different nonprofits and uh, I looked up on the wall and there was this piece of artwork because their wall is covered in artwork. And there was just this gigantic print and it was like flowers and it just really caught my eye. And I was like, I think I need that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I walked out that day with a brand new, and that's in our living room. And I look at it and I'm like, this was the perfect thing. Awesome. It fits so like like it's always was always there right um but it was one of those moments of like you know i never think to Mm -hmm. just come and browse because in my mind i'm like well one it's dangerous if i don't have (laughs) (laughs) because i will find things right but that but you know it's guilt-free because you're um, benefiting the mission right one it's extremely affordable right to (laughs) do some impulse shopping and two um, it's not just furniture. And I just, I, I don't know that people necessarily realize that, um, that it, you know, if you're out and about and you're wanting to do some window browsing, I think that would be a really great place because place you never know what you're going to find. And I should tell you that we have had a change of hours. So we, um, we are now open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 9 a.m., to 5 p.m. Okay. So those hours are extended, but we closed on Tuesday so that we can do pickups and deliveries and things like that on those days. And then Saturday we're open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So uh, just to let you know that, yeah. and we are, and um, we have a big neon sign that was donated to us from one of our fabulous um, workers um, that'll say that it's open so that you won't have to guess and have oh, to look in the nice. window so hard. But um, yeah, it is a fun place to shop. We have lots of different stuff. It's changing all the time. Um, we are reorganizing, so our pictures are set up really nice now. We've got some uh, shelving that we put up, oh. so it's all kind of uh, more beautiful. Um, well, and, it certainly worked for me. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> but you can see it more without having to, kind of, and we just take them down without having to put nails all over the place. Um, and we also have an, a line of paint now. Oh. And this paint is awesome because it is... Um, recycled paint but it's very high quality they sell it in other places in other stores and you can you know price match and see that we have it a couple dollars lower than the other folks wow and this particular paint line also donates paint to our homes so if we need to do painting in in our homes they this is donate the- it to us so it's a it's a kind of a cool thing as well to support Very them. Very cool. Yeah. Again, probably not something you would have thought to go. We should uh-huh. check there. Right. Um, and kind of a cool thing. I mean, not to everybody, but to me, it's kind of a cool thing because you know when you go to a paint store and you're looking at all those swatches of options of colors, we don't mix colors, but they have pre-selected some fabulous colors 
so you don't have to go in and go, oh, what would be a good kind of a gray blue color or whatever, because they right. have it. So we have 18 different colors. Yeah, choice paralysis can, yeah, is a real it, thing. It is a bad <laughs> deal. And then you get home and it's never right. So yeah. these are pretty much, they're tested and approved as, as good colors. So Awesome. It depends awesome. on who you are, I guess. But, mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about choosing paint colors since I live in a parsonage, but for oh. those of you who do... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, it's a good place to support. And I, I know we're kind of going on, but I, I should talk about the home ownership program because Please, we yes. are doing some good stuff with that as well. Uh, recently, we had um, a few months ago now, we purchased back a home from a, a Habitat homeowner who had been. Um, she was a single mom of one when she moved in, um, and uh, about ten years ago. And she purchased the home, and um, now she is married and has a second child. And so they're ready to move on to a a new home. And so um, we decided to purchase it back from her to keep in our program. And so she was able to have a, you know, over those 10 years, you know, that she would have probably been renting for most of that because of not being able to afford that. She then had, I think it was... $70,000 $70,000 to put towards her next place because she kept her house up wonderfully. It was, you know, um, easy to, to buy back from her. And since we held the loan, we didn't have to output all of that money. We could just forgive, you know, and so right. we're just, and so it is um, it's just wonderful. I mean, it was like one of the best things to happen to me. And it was one of the first things that happened <laughs> to me when I, uh, got here is that this program works great right because now she's you know like i said if she would have single mom you know on a, right. not a great in, she had a good job and she had you know no major problems with anything um but pain each month and uh, keeping up the house and it was definitely resellable and so she had a, a good chunk of money to move on right. to her next to her next home with her family. That's amazing because so often we just think about it like as the blessing or as the, the you know, hand up is is getting into the habitat house. Mm-hmm. And, and that really is, but mm-hmm. how how it actually can extend. And, you know, I don't know that I've ever heard a story about uh, how having the habitat house and, and building the equity rather than renting and, Allowed allows for that to continue. And like, see, that's where you kind of get to the part where you can see where it changes lives for yeah. generations. Because yeah. now, imagine, imagine her trajectory if she was in a you know a, a rental place with her child, and you know, and um, you know maybe being set back. And now in this economy, with you know the housing prices going so far up, um, you know, without that nest egg that she was able to build under there, yeah. Would she be able to become a home buyer even now right. um, without that that first step, you know, 10 years ago? And so that, was, that sets up those kids to, you know, have better education outcomes because they have that equity, you know, right. built up. Um, so, you know, parents can usually you know, help with that education piece more. It's more likely for those kids to own their own homes um, because they are living it. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to see when you're a kid that it's possible for you when it's not right. possible, you haven't seen it, you right. know, from your parents. Um, and then better health outcomes for, for that. So it's, that was just really, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of dedications, yeah. but I haven't seen that cool kind of, hey, yeah, no, look at you go. Look it's, at yeah, you. Look it's at still you going. Because you did the program yeah. the way you were supposed to, and you followed through. And, um, yeah, now, it works. Now you're, you're, yeah set up great and it just gives me goosebumps talking about it so oh that's amazing Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. Yeah. well I love to hear I love to hear the stories of what what happened you know like at the end of movies and Mm -hmm. then they always tell you about this character ended up doing like I love those kind of right yeah yeah Yeah. because that's what you hope is that that this initial investment leads to a better life right exactly right Yeah. yeah yeah it's wonderful and um, besides that one, we did just find a, a new family that's just been approved by a board um, that's going to uh, start the program to take um, to move into that home, to purchase that home. Um, and then we have possibly, um, we have a lot in Yankton that was uh, the city and county had given to us okay. um, that had a, a home on it that needs to be demolished so that's on our docket for probably next year okay uh, and then we possibly have two more 
um, homes to buy back um, coming up here soon. So we have a lot of activity yeah. to do um, in Yankton. And it's super exciting um, for us to really increase our increase our impact and our right. um, and our capacity to, to do more and more and more. And with that will come more capital that we can do more right. of those repair projects and things like that on the site as well. So Yeah, which again, when it benefits one, it benefits everybody. Mm -hmm. So Exactly. Yeah. That, that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. And and again, we'll be finding ways that the church can be supporting and and partnering in those different missions. And if if, if this is something that really sparks interest in you, um, there are plenty of ways to uh, get involved with Habitat. What are some of the ways that, that uh, you're always looking for, I should say? Um, you know, we always, um Soon, we'll be um, asking for those construction volunteers and things like that. Um, but we always have uh, things to do at the ReStore. We can use um, we can use a couple more cashiers, probably, that would be helpful. Um, we have things to organize. Um, we're looking at if you're kind of a person that knows about tools and, um, you know, the nails and the screws and all of that type of stuff, and you're good at organizing, what we're looking to do is is kind of to bag those up and put pricing on them, you know, kind of like materials that yeah. make sense to go together. So if you're somebody that, you know, likes to do that kind of stuff, yeah. we would, you know, love to have you come and just take a chair and sit down and, and do that. It would be fun. Um, and then we also need folks that can help, you know, uh, do pickups of, of donations. Um, right now we have a pretty big lack of help in that area okay. and so the people that do it work really hard <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah if you ever want to volunteer um, just give us a call and we can kind of tell you um, I think it's going to be possibly on Mondays and Saturdays is our main pickup days but um, you know just give us a call we'd love to chat with you about any of that fun yeah. stuff or yeah. office work too. There's who doesn't love office Who work? doesn't? <laughs> I need help. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the main things right now. And then we'll, we'll start some uh, more fun things uh, to help, you know, with this new partner family we have uh, to painting and some stuff like that. Okay. Could use some help with in the near future. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that, that you were able to come and visit and share and I'm really excited to see this bench uh -huh. and then also again that Habitat's going to be coming and, and uh, working with us on our Raise the Roof rummage sale yes. uh, that's what we're calling it, uh, I love it. Our, yes. this roof uh -huh. uh, needs needs some work done. Yeah, well, that's what I heard yeah. so yeah. yeah. Which apparently is a thing when you have buildings that you have to repair them. I guess that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. That I would, mean you should you would yeah. I mean yeah, that's part yeah. of our home ownership class probably would be to tell you to <laughs> yeah, make sure your roof stays good when <laughs> <be> repaired. Yes. <laughs> we need it. Yeah. It's not something you can ignore. So right. yes. um, so that's part of uh, what we've been doing this this spring yeah. and is is working toward uh, making that happen. So mm -hmm. Uh, but again, thank you so much. Sure. And uh, have you figured out where we are this week? <laughs> I picked a little bit easier. I think this is an easier spot to figure out where we are. Um, I will say that I've only had, I think, one person who guessed right last week. Uh, so last week's episode was filmed in our adult Sunday school classroom on the second floor uh, across from our confirmation room. I think the sink behind us threw a lot of you off. I had a lot of guesses <laughs> that we had um, recorded it in a bathroom, oh, which I'm not sneaky. brave yeah. <laughs> enough, I think, to do yet. Um, but let's see how well you do this week. I, I think I picked an easier location, mm -hmm. but... Um, I don't know. I might be sneakier in the future. We'll, we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. If you guess right, let me know. You can get a small prize from me. Uh, it just lets me know who's watching, and I'd love to hear that you're watching the podcast. So until next time, God bless. Thank you for listening to this episode of What's Going On. We'd love to have you join us for worship here at the church on Sundays at 10 a.m. You can also find us online via our website at firstumcyankton.org, or search for us on YouTube.